You know, some people actually think that the original Sonic Adventure is way better than Sonic Adventure 2. Now, for me, I'm gonna have to disagree with that for a bit. But before we get into that, let's talk about the game first. In retrospect, I probably should have talked about this game first, but... Oh, what you gonna do? I really like SA2. Sonic Adventure was created just before the Y2K incident, and the dot-com bubble, and other notable events. You know, a lot of people could say that this game marked the beginning of the end for Sonic. And for Sega! <laughs> Funnily enough, I don't see this game being nearly as uh, polarizing as Sonic Adventure 2. For Sonic Adventure 2, the internet will sing its praises one day, and then the next day they're gonna say that this game is worse than Sonic 06. We'll get there one day. But for the first game, you hardly hear anything about it, like, people will complain about its glitches, but we'll still call it a landmark game for being Sonic's first venture into 3D. So, what is this? Is this just an arbitrary hatred, or is there a reason for it? So, right off the bat, we can play as uh, Sonic, as one would hope. So you're gonna boot up the game, and then BOOM! This game looks like the 90s, it smells like the 90s, and it sounds like the 90s. Oh, yeah! You're gonna kill this water dude, and then you are free to roam around the city. Exploring Station Square is absolutely, like, without a doubt, one of my favorite things to do in this game. I don't know what it is, but as a kid, I have just fond memories exploring cities. That, actually, that was just a thing I did as a kid. Um, for just about every game I had on the GameCube, if you could explore in it, I would just walk around and do nothing. Like Mario Sunshine too. I would just wander for hours in Delfino Plaza. Which is kind of the sad thing about Sonic Adventure 2, because unlike the first game, they got rid of a world map. Which, admittedly, it really streamlines the game. Because some of the things you do in the map really don't make sense. You know, one minute, gotta go to Station Square, you see Eggman, the next minute, oh, well now I just gotta talk to the magical fairy. Uh, if I'm being honest, to call as a guide for where to go next seems like a very, very lazy and bandage type of fix for the game's lack of clarity. But you know what, who cares that this was clunky? It was just fun. Look, Sonic Adventure 2, you know what, that map, the little mission select map, uh, that's okay. But it does not hold a candle to Station Square. Now, uh, I can't say the same for Mystic Ruins. Dude, this place sucks! You know, honestly, as fun as, uh, exploring Station Square was, I spent a lot more time in Mystic Ruins. Oh, that's not fun, man. Let me tell you, Mystic Ruins is built like a maze. It's just, it is just horribly designed. I hate it. I spent more time in Mystic Ruins instead of Station Square because I got freaking lost all the time. I could not figure out where to go. You know, I was talking about how I was a dumb kid. Well, that's true. But just, just look at the map. Look at this stupid, stupid map. It doesn't make any sense. Look at this. It's just spaghetti vomit. You know, you start off by the train station. Tails' workshop is to the right, and it's one of the first places you go to. That's fine. It's out in the open. Good design. So after a few stages, the mountain blows up for no reason. But you're gonna be inclined to go to it. That's okay design. A little lazy, but you know what? Perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Now you go through the tunnel, and then there's Angel Island. For story reasons, it's pretty cool to see Angel Island there since, you know, long story short, it gets sent to the ocean, falls down, runs out of power. But like, dude, it's used as a glorified entrance to Red Canyon. They don't do anything with it. It sucks. Off the top of my head, they use it for like three cutscenes. I think there's like two Knuckles cutscenes for it. And then there's um, a cutscene at the end for the last story. Uh, it, it's such a waste. They do nothing with it. You just see Angel Island and then go to Red Canyon. I hate it. Now, okay, this isn't the worst part. Right between Tails' workshop and Red Canyon is this stupid jungle. Just look at it. This is how I spent most of my time here as a kid. I, again, I wasn't the sharpest crayon on the tool shed, but holy crap. When I would accidentally go here, I just got lost for- It felt like hours, man. It felt like hours every time, okay? And this is back when, like, the internet was a scary thing. Uh, I'm a kid, you know, I'm not really uh, very familiar with it. So I didn't have any maps to look up, eh. Honestly, I was too lazy to look in a guidebook, so... Yeah, it's... Ugh! It's just this ugly, ugly, shit-designed, poorly thought-out piece of shit, diarrhea, dookie maze. I. Don't even get me started on those keys! Why are there fucking oh, no. keys here? Why is there an ice key in the city? Why is the wind key at Tails Workshop? It makes no sense! <laughs> I love the Mystic Ruins. When you actually make your way through the maze and you get to see Eggman's base, that was one of the coolest things as a kid. I mean, look at this. You got Metal Sonic. You got this, uh... Uh... Silver Sonic thing? I, I don't really know what it is, but it looks cool. 
Just imagine all the cool stuff Sonic Adventure 2 would have done if it had it. Like, imagine an explorable space colony arc and you can see things, maybe even like foreshadow the bio lizard. That would have been amazing. I, I would have loved that. But hey, you know, it is what it is. They went with the streamlined map. I can't really like fault them for it. It makes sense. So along your adventure, you're gonna come across some classic characters. Usually when you meet them, you unlock their story, complete everyone's story, and then you get a secret story. Ooh. I wonder what it's gonna be. It's supersonic. It's, it's supersonic. Sonic story is definitely the longest and it is, uh, it's the reason you get the game, honestly. It is the most fun too. I have a lot of good memories watching my brother play through it. It serves definitely as the main focus of the game. Where Sonic Adventure 2 was a little bit more balanced, I believe in the hero story, there's still more Sonic levels than everyone else. On the dark story, it definitely felt a lot more Eggman and Rouge oriented, whereas Shadow didn't get a lot. So in general, your speed levels to the other types, it was a lot more balanced. This game, it definitely knows that you came here for Sonic, and I like that. I like that a lot, actually. So your next story after Sonic's is gonna be Tails' story, and it's pretty identical to Sonic's story. It follows a lot of the same beats, except Tails is just a chat in it for whatever reason. Oh yeah, that's one thing that I almost forgot to mention. Something I didn't like as a kid, but I really like now, is that each story, when they uh, intersect and have same scenes, the dialogue is just slightly different in order to make the characters stand out more. And I honestly really think, I, I like that. I really appreciate that. It's as if the characters are telling a story and from their perspective, they're the main character. So for example, in the first Eggman encounter, it's Sonic spitting one-liners. But when you do that same encounter with Tails, it's suddenly Tails who's the hero and is being brave. So the thing about the intersecting stories that Sonic Adventure 2 has is, uh, you know, it's a good idea. I like it. Yeah, but their execution was a little flawed because you end up with a lot of really goofy moments like, oh cool, Sonic just beat Chaos 6, and then, oh, cool, Big the Cat just beat Chaos 6. Nice. So Knuckles is actually a lot better in this game than in SA2. So my problem with um, Knuckles in SA2 that I talked about in my video is that his stupid radar only works linearly. So you're looking for three pieces of the Master Emerald. If you are by piece number one, your radar will glow up. You can get it. Easy. If you're by piece number three and you still haven't gotten the first emerald, it, it won't tell you. It, it literally just won't tell you. It's really stupid. I don't know why they would do that. Like, the weirdest thing is that they got it perfect in the first game. If you're just near an emerald, the radar's gonna go off. It, it, it makes sense. It just, it makes sense. Another thing too that, uh, yeah, this is a lot more subjective, but I personally prefer the maps in Sonic Adventure 1 over at Sonic Adventure 2, even though, honestly, it looks like every map is just recycled. I don't know, I kind of prefer that. I, I was never really too big of a fan of Knuckles' uh, more vertical stages, like Pumpkin Hill, pretty good music. I like the aesthetic, but it's not fun flying from pumpkin to pumpkin. Aquatic Mind's a nightmare. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I don't like that. And then uh, a lot of people hate the space level. I thought it was okay, but honestly, I totally understand it. It is, <laughs> it's a little too big for its own good, but you don't really have that problem in Sonic Adventure 1 since they're all recycled stages. They're all meant for Sonic, except they'll usually be like cut off. So yeah, I thought, I thought that was just fun. Now, the next three characters all have the shortest stories, so we can talk about them pretty rapid fire. Amy, she's really slow and will just get stalked for the entire game. Fun fact, as a kid, I was actually too scared of Zero to even beat this mode. Big the Cat, he can fish. People give this mode a lot of flack, but it's really not that bad. It's four stages, it's definitely filler, but if you play Big the Cat in between other play sessions of other characters, it's not bad at all. That is, of course, if you uh, know how to fish and you're not actually just stupid like me and you waste 20 minutes, it's getting fish you don't need. But hey, for this, I can't really fault the game for my own stupidity. E102 Gamma is, oh my gosh, I love this character. I could gush about it for hours. We're gonna keep it short. Okay, E102 Gamma is a really unexpected, but really welcome addition to the game. It, it's really random being able to play as one of Eggman's robots, but oh man, it is fun. You'll laugh, you'll cry. And uh, you know what? What's cooler than a Sonic character with a gun? Last but certainly not least is the final story, and oh, dude, this was super hype to me as a kid. Like, my brother would tell me about it, I'd hear about it, I'd see videos of it and screenshots of it, and I thought that was just the coolest thing. Like, my brain would just hype it up. Uh, listen to this. Station Square gets flooded. It's up to Sonic to go super and save the day. Uh, don't even, don't even get me started on that cutscene.
That was just a good cutscene. I love it. Admittedly, I honestly don't even care how ugly this looks by today's standards. It was really cool back then, and I still think it doesn't look completely awful. You know, as a kid, you really don't think about how ugly graphics are. And, you know, I'm gonna give the game some slack too, because uh, this did come out in 1998, you know. But just look at the visual improvements made in three years for Sonic Adventure 2. Even other enemies just in this game look better than that final boss. But hey, making a water enemy was ambitious, and it kind of paid off. This port, it blows, it sucks. This is, this is an awful port. Uh, this port actually just blows. I don't know what happened or why it looks like this or why things happened like this, but uh, sit down for a little bit of story time. This port absolutely just butchers this game. Now, as a kid, you don't notice, especially if you're a kid who's never owned a Dreamcast, but this version looks significantly, to me at least, worse than the Dreamcast version. There's a whole laundry list of weird, unnecessary, and kind of stupid changes made from Dreamcast to the GameCube port. One of them that I don't like is the new models. They use the Sonic Adventure 2 models, which is fine. I mean, the models look good. But then they made them made out of plastic, and I don't understand why they would want to do that. You know, maybe make them line up with, like, Sonic Heroes or something. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It looks really ugly to me. I honestly genuinely prefer the Dreamcast models. There are other weird map changes too, like on Station Square, the Town Hall looks different for some reason, which also destroys continuity in a level. There's a really good video by Cybershell covering this, so I recommend you go watch that. But hey, that is my review on Sonic Adventure DX. I recommend you go out and play it. It is a really, really fun game, and I don't think it's better than Sonic Adventure 2 since Sonic Adventure 2 has this level of polish to it, but I really respect it for what it is being one of Sonic's big first 3D releases. And even with his issues, I think you should go out and play it. It's a great game. Thanks for watching. Bye bye Thanks for making it to the end of my video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, giving it a like, and turning on that bell. Honestly, I've taken a big break from YouTube, so I'm hoping to get things back on track. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day.